Okay, now we discuss and contra contrast pragmatism with intellect. I was watching an interesting documentary on the problem is I've forgotten the title of it and the guy that done it um, but it's on YouTube somewhere and one of the philosophers in there raised an issue he said uh, he was concerned that if you abrogate intellect it, he made it seem like it would be the end of the world obviously when I look at philosophers and intelligent great minds discussing these issues I first of all I understand their point their take on things and then I go off on a tangent and of course when everybody watches my videos they understand my take on things and they go off on a tangent so as a theist <laughs> when it comes to worrying about whether your intellect is abrogated yeah um, is not the end of the world kind of thing for us because the best way to fight, especially as a targeted individual who's um, kind of honoured in that way, um, academically, um, the best way to fight is to to deal with your mind and um, to try and have positive conversations around you that make you feel like it's not the end of the world. So you conceptualise a being, a deity if you like, someone who is untouchable and is, uh, superior to anything that can never come out of man. So whenever you're in a situation where men are victimizing you, you imagine of that being, the imagination of that being that is superior to everything that they can do to you, helps you in terms of placebo heal yourself and learn to cope with your situation better so being a theist to me is helpful not just as a placebo effect but also in a pragmatic way I keep mentioning the qubit and where they had to accept that um, intellect has to be abrogated in order for them to see an effect. Do you know what I mean? Then the question is, is intellect more important than using the bloody thing? <laughs> we all know when we do scientific investigation, we need financial backing. And our backers are not really interested in our intellect. They're interested in what we can deliver, what can work, what, can, what they can use it for. So... <laughs> So, where you need to abrogate your intellect in order to make something work, in order to, you know, um, sustain yourself in, in your field, then you shouldn't feel like it's the end of the world uh, to imagine a situation where intellect is abrogated. But back to the point. So... When you reach a point where <clears throat> you have to not see something for it to exist, which is what quantum mechanics, <laughs> quantum theory suggests, <laughs> where if you don't intellectually see it, it exists. But once you intellectually see it, it stops existing. Then if you need to use it, you have to abrogate your intellect in order to use it this this should be just fine it should be fine so now you're using something that you know nothing about yeah and you can never know nothing about and you have to accept that you can never know it for it to exist so abrogating your intellect in those scenarios is not con it doesn't contradict intellect itself it doesn't because if you're intellectually 
if you intellectually abrogate intellect, <laughs> yeah, if you choose as part of a strategy, then that's a form of intelligence. Yeah, that's also intellect. Choosing not to be intelligent is also a science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um then you can say maybe it's not possible to abrogate intellect <laughs> maybe intellect has more dimensions to it than what we normally uh uh see it's not just uh, a four dimensional thing yeah there are other dimensions other ways of looking at intellect yeah like i say i keep saying uh you have a glass that's green on one side, red on the other. Uh, the people who are standing on the side where it's red will swear blind that the whole thing is red. But on the other side, they're seeing green. Yeah, so <laughs> there are different ways of being intelligent. There's different measures of intelligence. Yeah, academia before quantum theory did not cover all the ways of being intelligent that there is. Counter intuition, yeah, based <laughs> intelligence <laughs> was not covered in academia because if it's not intuitive, no one's gonna believe it. But now, with quantum physics, they're saying the counter intuitive can also be regarded as true, yeah, and to prove it. That's the scenario. If you stop realizing something and that allows it to happen, then you can utilize it when it's happening without actually realizing it. Then counterintuitive information is valid because we can use it. Now, how do you apply intelligence to things which are counterintuitive? These are things, it's about intu intuition. If you, ca you can't get it unless it's intuitive. Unless you can say that, yeah, this happens. Yeah? You know, but, but where is counterintuitive? And you say, well, from what I've seen of the, the universe, the world, that should not be happening. <laughs> yeah? And then you stop knowing it and it happens. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to accept that this only happens when the way I know the universe is not there. Where I, I, I remove that. Yeah? I know the intelligence that goes with it. So you go into another dimension. So abrogating our intelligence you know the one the intelligence we get from academia yeah is not an issue with me because as a targeted individual you could be an, as intelligent as you like but at the end of the day it's about manpower and things we can use yeah so intelligence can only get you so far <clears throat> before you have to go into the spirituality or the counterintuitive data set. <clears throat> yeah? That's what spirituality is the counterintuitive data set. <laughs> In terms of information that you get from reality, yeah, and the universe as a whole. Yeah? So um, I'm gonna try and keep this one 10 minutes long. Yeah? I'm starting to rhyme with it. I don't want to reveal too much because I'm freestyling this. It's not a speech that I've written down. There's no script. Yeah. Um, so I'm having to be careful with what concepts I introduce because, um, again, I don't want to hurt the counterintuitive data set too much. Yeah. Because I'm using that and I've already been using that. Even before quantum computing, I was already in church. <laughs> I was already appealing to the counterintuitive data set, yeah, 
to um to help me fight so i don't want to realize too much i want to keep some things unrealized so that i can use them yeah so you can't realize what the almighty is you keep that one unrealized so that you can so it's gone over 10 minutes let me just finish it <laughs>